So how's everyone doing? <laughs> Wednesday, you know, halfway through the week, we're getting there. Thank you for those that have come to learn a little bit about STEM, one of the most fascinating uh, areas you can study. I'm a little biased, obviously. Um, okay, food science faculty at Cal State. Cool, cool. All right. Um, so maybe we can have some of our panelists just introduce themselves at least first. We could start with that introductions. Uh, Sunil, I knew you have uh, to leave a little earlier so you could. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Yeah. Hello. Hello. My name is Sunil Mangalasari. I'm a professor of food science and technology at Cal State LA. Uh, so I have been in uh, with that program for the la last 11 years. So we have a major in food science and technology, BS. So if you just uh, briefly what food science, everything about food is science until mm -hmm. we consume it, right? So uh, we teach, we prepare students to go out and work for various food manufacturing, processing and other types of industry as well as for USDA, FDA. And you have plenty of opportunities to do graduate studies in food science and related fields. Very Thank cool. you. Thank, Thank you for talking. <laughs> uh, Trisha, did you want to say? Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Trisha Ramirez. I am here representing the Innate Edge, uh, which is my small business where I work with organizations and their teams to help them work together through stronger connections with one another. Um, mm -hmm. I'm here um, as part of Kaiser Permanente, I do run the KP Launch Summer Internship Programs, um, really helping underserved community members learn about all the different opportunities there are to work in healthcare. Very cool. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Josh, you want to go next? Sure. Uh, mm -hmm. My screen froze there for a little bit. <laughs> I'm Joshua Hidalgo. I am a math support faculty at PCC. Uh, specifically, I work out of the Math Success Center, and that's uh, the tutoring center. But we don't just do tutoring. We develop uh, different resources uh, that students can use to help you know, support their learning. And uh, we uh, I'm also one of the uh, tutor trainers for all of the uh, tutors on campus. So that's what I'll be doing. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, do we have any more panelists here? I'm trying to see any more panelists here, or is one else just participating? Is it? Oh. Hi, everyone. Uh, this is Nja here. I work with SNU uh, um, at Cal State LA, so I'm an assistant professor in the food science and technology program at Cal State LA as well. Here we go. We got two food specialists. Love it. <laughs> All right. Well, um, we have like a nice small group. So again, if you're coming in a little late, if you want to put in the chat uh, your name and your potential major, if you want to try to make some connections while we're here, or if you do have any questions, you can write them in the chat as well. Uh, but we can go ahead and get this party started. So um, one question that we were hoping that our panelists could answer is what led you uh, to follow this career path? So we could kind of go in any order or we'll see how it rolls. <laughs> sure, I'd be happy to start. Um, Great. So I am actually calling in from Oakland, California. So I'm in Northern California. Um, I'm from the San Fernando Valley, born and raised. Um, I've been here more than half of my life in Oakland, though. Um, I am Filipina. And so like many Filipinas, as I was growing up, I was told that I either have to be an engineer or a nurse. And so when I didn't do well in calculus, my mom was like, oh, good, you can be a nurse. Um, and at the time that I went into my undergrad, getting into nursing school was really hard. It literally was up to winning the lottery to get into a, a nursing program. And so I did it win the, the lottery and I looked at the next best thing in my, um, my course catalog and I found health science, which is equivalent to public health. Um, 
I actually knew what I wanted to do when I was in high school, and I wanted to be that one Planned Parenthood health educator who scared the bejesus out of the class because we didn't know what that rash meant, or we didn't know what true abuse and relationships looked like, or we didn't know what an actual healthy lifestyle looked like. And so I, I went home and I told that to my mom, and she was like, oh, great, you have to be a nurse to do that. Um, and so at the time, you know, I had to leave LA to go to school. I went to San Jose State. And when I did actually start getting into my health education courses and my public health courses, that's when my true passion came alive. And I really started to connect with people. And so my actual training is in um, behavior change um, along the lines of health education, health promotion. Um, and then as I graduated, um, I did two internships with the County of Santa Clara. And I learned that I didn't want to work for the public health department. Um, it wasn't the impact that I wanted to make. And uh, the public health nurses were making far more money. And so um, as I graduated, I thought I was going to be a health educator and then the recession hit. And so as the recession hit, I was put in a position that I had to really figure it out what my network was. And thanks to my network, um, I was able to secure a job in workforce diversity with a company called Health Career Connection, another um, internship-based organization that's national, really providing folks from under-resourced communities with internships so that they can learn how to be profession uh, healthcare professionals. Um, so I've really been, for the past 10 years, supporting people, figuring out how to become the type of healthcare professional that they want to be. Um, you know, like for me, I, I was told that I was supposed to be a nurse and when I wasn't a nurse, I had to figure out what to be next. Um, it's something that I see common in our under-resourced communities where our parents and our aunts and uncles and our grandparents really want us to do something great. Um, and they think doctor or nurse. Um, and I think a lot of times we forget that there are other programs and other things to do besides nursing and being a physician. So um, that's the work that I do also now with Kaiser Permanente. Um, and I think about now the, the passionate work that I do with the Innate Edge, um, because I am a Myers-Briggs type indicator facilitator, I really learned that all of the health education, health promotion, behavior change work that I did is what I missed. And now what I do is I bring that into different organizations to help people connect, um, really generating empathy with one another so that you can still serve the goal that you're looking to serve. Thank you very much. I love that. That's a, it's a good description of how our paths change, right? You know, we're just trying to find our way and sometimes you'll find that class that just connects you into something that really strikes your passion. So thank you so much, Trisha. Uh, anyone else want to go? All right, I'll go next. Okay. Great. Hey, everyone. Yeah, so um, I, when I was, uh, I did my bachelor's degree in China. When I was you know, in China, everyone has to uh, take the same college entrance examination. It's a competition nationwide and it's very competitive. Uh, so I, I had, a, I did really well in that exam. And, but I didn't, um, anyway, so um, at that time, uh, I had a very good score. Uh, so I was able to pick any major I want to study. And at that time, uh, food safety was a big issue in China and food quality and the safety become a very hot major. There has been some uh, per, like tele television programs uh, talking about the quality or any new issues coming up each week um, in food safety. So everyone think uh, this would be a really uh, of course, it's a very useful field and it was really hot at the time. So I, um, I, I didn't against, I mean, uh, my family suggested this major and I thought uh, it doesn't hurt to learn more about food, which everyone loves and I love too. Uh, so I got into food science, um, but not having that great uh, interest at the beginning. It didn't click to me until when I started to take biology and um, uh, um, and food chemistry courses. Um, bio, actually, biochemistry and food chemistry courses. So in those two courses, it just amazed me that was 
exactly what I've been wanting to know uh, during my middle school, high school years, but I didn't know there was such a, uh, a subject like that that just talk about all those um, materials. I was really interested in those two topics and it led me to research more and to study more into a uh, chemistry related field in the food science. So after that, I applied to graduate school and did my PhD at the University of Kentucky. I had a really good mentor um, who led me to a lot of like very advanced um, research and that uh, just opened me up to a new, a whole new world of research, which I really love. So I was uh, interested in both industry and academia jobs. And my friends around me were just saying, oh, you'll be a great teacher. <laughs> You're so patient, you will do well as an educator. So gradually, um, I leaned towards the academic route and here I am. <laughs> Very cool. So the field got you interested and then you got interested in helping others get into the field. So I love that full yeah, circle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and also another reason is during my graduate study, uh, I got a scholarship from the um, Institute of Food Technologists. That's mm. a, national, it's a, a national professional organization in the food science field. And um, yeah, that really inspired me. They provide a lot of scholarship to help the next generation of food scientists. Mm -hmm. And one of the goal I want to do is also to help um, the next generation of food scientists. It's fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Josh or Sunu, everyone? Yeah, sure. I'll go ahead. Mm -hmm. So I would say the career path I chose of long before I realized it was education. Um, my very first job was in the mailroom for the local school district that I worked for. Mm -hmm. And I kind of forget how I landed that job. I think like a, a teacher kind of mentioned it. I was like, yeah, sure, I'll apply, see how it goes. And uh, so that got me into the school district. And it actually, uh, when I would finish sorting out mail, I would just help around the district, uh, just like filing paperwork and things like that. And uh, that connected me with the accounting department. Mm. So when I graduated uh, high school, they offered me a job as just kind of like an intern type position with the accounting department. And I was pretty good with numbers. And uh, at the same time, uh, or just before that, before I graduated, I had a, a math tutor as part of a program at the high school I went to. And he was encouraging me to do things in mathematics. So like, well, I told him, well, I'm doing this accounting thing. And they're like, oh, maybe you want to be, you can be an actuary. You know, they, they run numbers and for risks and businesses and things like that. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll, I'll look into uh, mathematics. And he's like, well, in the meantime, after you graduate, we're probably going to be hiring tutors. I'm like, okay, I'll see how that goes. So I did the accounting for a little bit after high school. And uh, it was an intern type position, like I mentioned. So I was like, okay, for some more money and the time I needed it, uh, I'll also tutor. So I tutored at a couple of different schools. I tutored at the middle school I went to and at the high school I went to. And then after tutoring, I would go do the uh, accounting or go to a school. And uh, I eventually just stuck to tutoring. And that led me to taking the uh, CSETs and becoming a high school tutor for the district that I kind of started off at. And um, after that, one thing led to another. And uh, I got my master's in mathematics. I just really enjoyed uh, studying it. So I felt like I wanted to go back and do more. And then I realized, like, okay, with this master's in mathematics, I can... Uh, get into education at uh, higher ed, you know, at um, the college level. And all that kind of tutoring background um, kind of made its way. So I, I tutored for years and then I started teaching at the college level, uh, various mathematics classes, and it put that all together. And I landed a gig here last year at uh, Pasadena City College 
I'm working at the Math Success Center, and now I help run the uh, kind of art math tutoring center, and it's been a great experience. Uh, I say that I don't really say that I'm a professor or I'm a you know some kind of manager of sorts. I, I'd like to say you know I'm in education yeah, because I like to think about uh, what helped me get here you know, the support, the learning, and how I can utilize the, uh, those experiences to help others get where they want to go. Very cool. Again, full circle. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's great that the experience got you into it as well, even more. And then as you went through the classes, that really got your passion going. Thank you for sharing. Uh, Sunil, did you want to share your? Yeah. Oh, so, um, I am originally a veterinarian from India. So I did my DVM degree uh, and started working as a large animal practitioner. And after a while, I thought to myself, why do people rear livestock, right? Poultry, cattle. Then I thought, okay, I want to take a different direction. So I did my master's in meat science. And along with that, it was a double master's I did in veterinary public health, dealing with all the zoonotic diseases. And then I taught in India for five years. So, and then I decided to uh, do my PhD here in the US. So I did my PhD from Clemson University in South Carolina in food technology with an emphasis in food safety. So, by the time I completed my PhD, I actually, if you take meat, I walked from farm to fork, complete cycle, because I worked in a meat processing facility where you dress animals, slaughter animals. So I walked through the entire chain. Now, one of my research area is food packaging. So, and I, so that's how I came into food science and after joining at Cal State LA, my primary focus was, uh, I was the only one in the program, most like in the initial part. So my focus was entirely on teaching, recruiting new students. And I sort of started loving it because most of the, you know, first generation students here and uh, it's kind of a path for me to get them into good jobs and and another passion for me regarding food and the science of food is food safety. I'm, I'm more of a food safety person. The things we are going through now, the climate change uh, and the pandemic itself, all these things are going to play into the field of food and food security, food safety, because as the climate is changing, some of these bugs are going to get more resistant. And so, so that's my passion actually. I, I, towards the end of my career, I would really like to work in the area of climate change and food security and food safety. But right now I'm really interested in, um, you know, getting the, the next generation of people interested in the science of food and food safety and food security. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, I mean, these are all things that we are facing very soon. So the more we can get right. students involved and making sure everyone is safe and healthy and that we aren't in a scarcity, right. that would be fantastic. <laughs> uh, next question would be, what does a typical day on the job look like for you? So just a daily thing. Trisha, did you wanna go first? You go in the same order if you guys want. Sure. Um... So I will take the more hopeful path of pre-COVID life um, and sharing what my daily schedule looks like. Um, I am responsible for developing the curriculum that about 300 interns in Northern California experiences while at Kaiser Permanente. And so um, the day that I'll pick is going to be one of the professional development days that my team and I run. Um, and, and what I really think about is students like you all coming into um, a big and dry and white-walled corporation like Kaiser Permanente and thinking about how to 
ease that uh, transition for you all. So coming from a very lax um, college um, where you might not have to wear slacks or iron your clothes, um, it's really about teaching you all the the nuances of what it's like coming into cor corporate culture. Um, I find that especially when I'm working with students coming from backgrounds underrepresented in healthcare careers is that maybe you all are the first ones who are going to end up walking into a corporate environment as part of your career. And so I'm very explicit in describing what professional attire looks like, describing how um, it might be interpreted when you come in with tattoos or with piercings, what you can do to still be authentic yet be able to belong in the culture. Um, and then also the different nuances of how to write a professional email and how to have water cooler talk and how to network. And so um, I really am able to connect with about anywhere from 10 to 50 interns on any professional development day, teaching them that that's what they need to do. Um, I feel like I do this so passionately because I have experienced that myself where my mom was a nurse and so that really meant that she was on the clinical facing side. But when I showed up at regional offices at Kaiser Permanente that the experience that I had was very different. Um, and I think that the term common sense kills me because it is not as common as we think. And so I put a lot of emphasis on being as explicit as I can so that people who look like me can figure out how to belong in corporate environment. And so that's what a, a, one of the good days would look like for me. Thank you so much. Um, let me go. Do you want to yeah, I can. go next? Perfect. Yeah. So uh, for a typical day, um, yeah, so when we're on campus, typically there will be classes. And uh, besides, so depending on um, the semester, sometimes I teach three, sometimes uh, more or less. And then uh, most of my classes do have lab. So mm -hmm. besides teaching the lecture, then uh, it'll be preparing the lab. Um, and then also mentor students for research activities. So I do have some undergraduate students who work with me on research projects. So they, um, I mean, the research uh, actually take more time when I was on campus. Um, then most of the time I focus on research and doing things in the lab uh, when I'm during the day when I'm on campus. And when I get back at night, I'll start working on the preparing the lectures, grading, <laughs> uh, setting up assignments, those kind of uh, teaching related activities. And then there will uh, be some um, meetings uh, at the department and the university level. We all as faculty members, uh, our major pr uh, priority like uh, responsibilities uh, teaching research uh, or any scholar uh, scholar activities like uh, reviewing articles or writing papers. Now a third part is the service, university service. So we're all in different committees. Uh, I've been in multiple like uh, award committees. So we uh, give, up, uh, give out funding to different uh, faculty who are doing different type of research. Uh, so they, the faculty would apply and the committee will uh, select uh, who will be get awarded. And there's also um, a committee uh, like, well, what's that, uh, GES, uh, general education subcommittee. So we'll talk about, um, we'll discuss all the general education course uh, proposals and see if they meet the requirement. Uh, there are a lot of act, uh, comedians, Sunil knows more than I do. Uh, so far I've served um, about like six to seven different committees. And yeah, so that takes uh, some part of our time as well. Yeah, I think those are the three major areas we've been working, but most of the time we're working with students, no matter if it's in in the class or in the research lab um, yeah uh, the meeting portion which we don't have a lot of students uh, probably the the 
most boring part. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for sharing. Yeah, it sounds like a very busy, typical day for everyone so far, but busy in a good way. Uh, Josh, did you want to share? Uh, yeah, sure. So I like to kind of break up my job into three parts. Um, there's the kind of prep work, the uh, resources, uh, me and my office mate try to create for the Math Success Center. And that can include uh, creating handouts, creating workshops, scheduling the ha uh, workshops, going over the different topics and down to the specific uh, examples that we are putting on those handouts and you know workshops. And um, another thing I like to think about are the tutors, because that's a big part of my job, is uh, uh, making sure that the tutors are trained so that they can uh, support the students, you know, uh, as best as possible. And uh, the third part of kind of how I kind of categorize things is just now the student aspect. Okay, so what am I specifically doing for uh, the students and how am I representing um, uh, PCC so that the students feel comfortable in our space, right? So that they feel uh, empowered and um, we are uh, the Mass Success Center and we want them to be successful, right? We want to support them uh, as much as possible by creating all these resources and these opportunities for them to have that support. Um, just like our uh, pre previous uh, faculty here have mentioned, um, Part of that is the meetings, um, collaborating with other faculty. And, and that is a big part uh, because you're getting to hear out how other faculty or staff across campus or even within the same building that you don't get to talk to as often, you know, how are they um, doing with their courses or how are they handling a particular uh, subject or um, how are we going to come together to support, you know, students and with uh, the division I'm a part of would be the math and computer science. So like what part do we take, you know, in, in the education? Thank you very much. Looks like meetings all around and uh, <laughs> definitely helping others in the process too, finding ways to best help not only students, but uh, future um, people in the health field so far. Uh, Sunil, do you want to share a typical day in uh, your job? Yeah, it's almost very similar to what Jing was mentioning. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, I have some uh, teaching is the primary job. So preparation for the class and once you are on campus, uh, making sure that, you know, we go, we lecture and then uh, meet during the office hours, all typical faculty job. I have uh, additional administrative jobs. I am the associate director of the department. So I have, uh, you know, scheduling of the courses, assignment of the faculty for different uh, courses. So those are some additional work. And apart from that, it's again, a little bit of research and advising students on some research project and uh, different committees as, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. The university's bulk of the, work is done by faculty. So we help in many areas uh, in, in, the, in the university. But as uh, Jing mentioned, uh, the most interesting part is interaction with the students. And, you know, we, we have a club, food science club. So we both uh, go to the club activities. We advise them. So it's predominantly student related and little bit of other things too. So that's a typical day. Thank you. Thank you. These uh, days sound exhausting, <laughs> but productive. I love it. Uh, one thing that we have kind of going around this entire conference is about social justice. Uh, I, a lot of times in STEM, uh, it might not be so diverse <laughs> as we would like it. And we're trying to make sure that social justice wise that we're having conversations about this. So either what does social justice mean to you? or how does your career or career path connect to social justice um, would probably be our next question. And I know Trisha, you kind of delved on it a little bit, but if you want to say a little more. Uh, can, I, can I take that question first? Oh yeah, because you have to I, I, go, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's okay, sorry. 
Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm really, that's one of the areas I am really, it's close to my heart, but, you know, in some areas like Trisha was mentioning health issues, our specific field is not that way related to some of the issues. But if you look, uh, uh, you know, we need to have representation um, of, uh, you know, diversity and one of our parent bodies, uh, they are trying to include more diversity in terms of faculty, in terms of students involved. And, um, you know, in many areas, and if you look at the food processing industry, we have a lot of, uh, you know, immigrant labor, actually. So, you know, um, Spanish uh, speaking, uh, the, the, the knowledge is, is a criteria in getting a job in some places. And also, you know, we have our different uh, diversity, different populations. So food is something, food manufacturing is something all these communities are involved so that way even for food safety when you make a brochure now the usda and fda they are keen to make it in multiple languages so that you know it goes to the restaurants and the restaurant workers so th those are that some of the changes happening and i would like to see more more diversity in the workforce at all levels yeah thank you Thank you. That's fantastic. And brochures in different languages, that's a must at this point. Got to make sure we reach the masses. Uh, thank you. And Sunil, I know you may have to leave you sooner than yeah. later, so whenever. Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate yeah, thank, your time. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Uh, bye. Trisha, did you want to share? Sure. Um, yeah, I. the social justice movement that's currently happening is definitely something that I feel like I've been aligned with um, well before um, the issues that we face publicly and on TV and in media today. Um, so it was positioned to me that, you know, about 10 years ago when I started this work, um, that there is a significant lack of physicians, nurses, and other healthcare providers who look like us. And at the same token, there's this huge economic opportunity gap that's there as well. Um, so when you think about a lot of the more um, reliable careers, even though pandemic shows us very different things, um, pre-pandemic when things were the last normal that we had, um, there aren't a lot of um, people representing our African-American, our Latino, our Southeast Asian communities when they're looking at these higher paying jobs in healthcare. Um, and to you students, I'll, I'll tell you now that one thing that we can unfortunately rely on is that people will get sick and therefore a lot of healthcare opportunities will very often be in demand. And so um, when I work towards, um, you know, serving my community members, my, my interns and talking with their families, I really emphasize that there are so many different ways that you can get engaged in healthcare, right? And I love that we have food scientists on here. We have people with, um, you know, there's Joshua with, with his education and accounting background. Like there's so many different ways to integrate yourself into some type of healthcare system um, where actually my husband is a microbiologist for Kaiser Permanente. And he's been talking about going into food industry because guess what? Those breweries need microbiologists too. Right. And so like, I'm down to get the free breweries. Like, <laughs> like let's see what that looks like. Um, and there's just so many different ways to engage. And, and for my husband and, and what he and I have been through, he was previously undocumented um, prior to us getting married. And so I've gone through the DACA process with him and we scrimped and saved to put him through a six week phlebotomy program that then really um, amplified the, the trajectory of his career that he could have. Now, granted, he is a a mid 30s student finishing his bachelor's, he's still making significant money. And I'm still very um, adamant about the two of us showing up in spaces and telling his story because um, when he and I met, he was a tattoo artist and body piercer in the San Fernando Valley. And who would have thought that, you know, just a little tweak to his, his uh, residency status, a little tweak to his career trajectory, um, he's making far more money and being able to really have a sustainable career. Um, that makes sense for him. Um, so I tell that story to all of my interns and really what I do also is, is in this big corporate environment, the reality is that there's still a lot of Caucasian leadership um, and especially by men. And so I'm also part of a business resource group at Kaiser where 
um, I'm helping bridge generational differences as well, right? So helping people understand that, hey, just because they're millennials doesn't mean that they don't have a lot to contribute or just because those people are baby booners doesn't mean that they don't know how to do things. Um, and so it's really just finding multiple levels for people to connect on um, and really generate empathy and generate understanding and really continue to extend patience is what I do and the leadership work that I do. Um, and, and I have a couple of times just walked down the sides of um, down my street and I live in East Oakland um, and picked up teenagers off the sidewalk saying, hey, do you need a job? Let's get you to work. Um, and so I, I'm really an advocate for, for us elevating ourselves to really be able to show up. And once you do show up, it's really important to turn around and give back to the next person who's waiting. That is so fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And like you said, social justice is so many things. It's not just, you know, it, it includes race, it includes ageism, it includes, you know, like you were saying, the generation gaps, and that's important to recognize. I just want to let everyone know we're going to keep um, answering this question. And then in about a few more minutes, I'm going to add to the chat a survey as well for uh, our participants to just comment. Uh, and then we will save a few minutes towards the end for whoever wants to kind of say a little something or ask some questions. So, uh, Jean, did you want to go next to say a little something about social justice? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, so from my personal experience, um, or just my opinion, I feel um, if no one mentions something, a lot of times we wouldn't realize that there's um, injustice going on or we're being treated differently or something. Uh, but I think at least in the US, people are bringing up those things to talk about. Um, there are a, a lot of differences. Uh, what um, like Trisha mentioned about the immigration status. So we both are um, from China. I mean, I'm, I'm from China. And when I graduated with my PhD degree, uh, it was actually not that easy for me to find a job uh, in the food industry because food industry is actually very, uh, very applied um, area. And it, it, in the industry, it doesn't require a very high level of education to work in the food industry. So they have a lot of openings for, bachelor, for, uh, for people with a bachelor's degree, and they, um, they want people with uh, work experience. So when I was a student just graduated with a PhD degree and with no uh, work experience, maybe too much education as well, uh, and also as um, someone who doesn't have it, uh, you know, who is not a US resident. So it was not, uh, it, it would cost the industry more to get my work permission, working with uh, something like that. So it's more trouble for the, for the industries and it'll, it makes it difficult for immigrants or people who do not have the citizenship to find a job in this field. Um, uh, but that, that's just one aspect. Now, as I have started working at CalSED A, uh, we are a Hispanic serving institution and we're really focusing on like a, a, a delivering resources to help the minority students. We also have a lot of first generation students and diversity is um, a high priority for this university. So we, uh, the university is willing and had to spend a lot of resources to help students from minority group to succeed and for me and Sunil, we have been writing a lot of uh, grants, grants applications to get funding for students who come from a minority background. In food science, um, there are a lot of workers who are from minority background, uh, but they are paid very low and they are working the most difficult jobs. So we want to change that and have more educated minority workers in the food science field and get into the management level, product development, and 
uh, because for the product development, we actually need a diverse of work group, workforce to make a diverse group of uh, diverse varieties of food for different people. And so I really think uh, for, uh, for our field, diversity matters in multiple aspects. Okay, that's uh, all I have for this. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, we do have a question for Trisha, and then Josh, sorry, I'm gonna have you add into it in a minute. Uh, Trisha, we have a question in the chat. Um, and it is, how did you break it to your parents when you decided to change your career path? <laughs> it has been years since I graduated. And I think um, that to this day, my parents had a hard time understanding what public health is um, until now, because the pandemic is an excellent example of how important public health is. Um, the way that I broke it to them is really by helping them understand what it was that I was experiencing, um, that I really had to step into this space of vulnerability and, and add some therapy to be able to articulate that this is who I am, this is what I want to do, and this is how I'm going to work hard towards it. Um, my parents are both immigrants, and so that is terrifying to them. And I really did just become very well-versed and the idea that this is what I want to do. I'm confident I'm going to do it. And I also had to show up by paying my own bills and really showing them that I could do it. Um, I, I think for me, leaving the Valley and coming up to Northern California gave me that independence. And when they saw that I didn't kill myself when I left home, that, that was a big part of it. Um, and then also just um, really continuing to articulate like what it is that I do. And and a lot of times um, my, my dad would go into the doctor and uh, he would have challenges communicating with the doctor or the nurse and it was based on language or it was based on different cultural needs that, you know, like you can't tell a Filipino to just stop eating rice, right? Like, you know, and it's just like for my husband, he says it's the same thing as telling him to stop eating tortillas, like whatever it be, you know, um, that is really what helped fuel the conversation for me to say, hey, this is what I do. And this is the bigger thing that I do for my community. Um, now, all of this HR kind of stuff that I'm doing, supporting people connect better is another conversation because they haven't seen the money behind it yet. Um, but, you know, I think as you all mature and you go through the classes, you'll start developing all the language that you need. Um, life will happen to you and you'll have the, the conviction and the language you need to show everybody that this is what I meant to do. That's so fantastic. Thank you for sharing. And that's the thing. A lot of times, you know, your parents want what's best for you, but uh, they don't necessarily know what's going to drive you and give you that passion. And especially if it's something in a social justice field like that, that's, you know, it's above and beyond. And if it's something they haven't heard of, that's really, really important. So thank you. Uh, were there additional questions? I know someone asked a question about the tutoring process as well at PCC specifically um, for the tutoring center, but did anyone have any other questions for our panelists in the last few minutes? I just want to check. You could say it out loud too if you want to turn your mic on or you can write it in the chat, whatever you prefer. Josh, you want to do a spiel on the MSC for? <laughs> yeah, sure. So uh, tutoring for the MSC. Well, to become a tutor, um, I'll, really, you just start with the application. So you're more than welcome to reach out to um, MSC uh, at Pasadena.edu. And um, or just reach out to me. I can go ahead and put my email in the chat. I, I think they were asking too about the process to how to sign up for tutoring. If oh, OK. Know. I Sorry. wasn't sure it was signing up. For <laughs> My bad. No, it's OK. Uh, yeah, so actually, it's gotten a lot easier now that we've kind of you know, worked out all the little kinks since um, we've gone remote. But if you go to the Math Success Center website and then just in the search bar, um, or the Pasadena website in the search bar, type in Math Success Center, um, there will be a button that uh, there that says uh, the Math Success Center Canvas uh, homepage. And um, there's instructions there on how to get tutoring. Um, 
also right above that button, uh, there will be a video and it kind of just talks about the resources that we offer and um, kind of walks you through the how to get the tutoring uh, yeah. as well. Virtual tutoring is a new thing. You can be in your PJs and still learn. <laughs> yeah, nobody has to see you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, were there any more questions for our panelists? Just check in in the chat. And uh, if you want, I know we're about time, but if you had any closing words you wanted to say, just words of advice. I mean, STEM is a very interesting field and, you know, it takes a lot of work and courage to be in. So I, I, I'm, I'm proud of each and every one of you for showing up today and showing your interest in it. Um, if any of our panelists want to just say any general words of wisdom uh, to our students that are here or participants that are here, that feel free. <laughs> I guess I'll just say something really quick. Um, like, like uh, Renee said, it's awesome that you're here in the first place. I mean, you're already interested. You already have, you know, your foot in the door. That's the best first uh, step. Um, the kind of seeking out and reaching out for that uh, for more information. Um, little quick words of advice, I guess. Uh, start small and. Uh, do something you enjoy and like uh, the different experiences that have come uh, that we've talked about, you know, we went one route and jumped onto another route and that's okay. And um, it's, it can be fun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jing or Trisha, if you wanted to say any last words of wisdom? Sure. Um, I, I echo what Joshua said. Um, it's really about finding joy. And um, I, I'm not 40 yet, but I have met so many people that hit the ages of 40 and say, I wish they had started their passion earlier. And so, um, you know, find what it is that you all like to do now and figure out how to do it. Um, and then also, I mentioned earlier that that my network is really what helps me get along my career and it's undefined. So it's really about using your network. Um, so when people like Joshua has, and, and I'm sharing my email too, when they share their emails with you, reach out, um, learn what you can from them because everyone's stories are different. Um, and you'll find that when they talk about their passion, they really light up and they can really um, help, help share their experiences with you that might influence your own path. Yeah, thank you. Continued resources are so important, getting to know each other. And um, I know it was mentioned before that there will be some, you know, maybe struggle classes along the way where you're like, why am I doing this to myself? And you have to remember that long term path. You know, if it's one hard semester, you won't laugh about it now, but trust me, you will later <laughs> and go, wow, I, I made it through that somehow and I got sleep and now I have a job I love. Awesome. Done. Huh? I, oh, I was saying, yes, I took physiology. <laughs> Twice and I was done. But you did it. That's all that matters. Took stats <laughs> twice. Oh, stats. <laughs> and I ended up doing a little bit of that. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, it happens. Yeah, there's a struggle. Yeah, I got an F on my first Calc 3 test. I remember that. And got an A on the final and a C in the class. And then I continued on and worked harder. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, Jing, did you have any last things you wanted to say? Yeah. Um, so just a few last words. Uh, I mean, if, uh, first, um, that's one thing I heard from others, and I've always it has stuck in my mind, and I've always been thinking about that when I do things. Uh, so it's fail to plan equals to plan to fail. So if you don't make a plan, you are set up to fail. So I highly encourage everyone. Even though the plans may change, your career passes may change, uh, you got to have a plan. And the success is only for people who are prepared. Even if you have a plan and it doesn't go 100% right, you're still making effort to do better and eventually it'll lead you somewhere. So have a plan and work hard. And another is um, when I was in school, I always tell myself, uh, just don't do anything that you know you will regret later. Uh, for example, if you have time and uh, you can choose either to exercise or play video games or go to do something, cra something crazy. So uh, just know like if you exercise, nothing will like it'll 
nothing bad will happen. <laughs> so it's always good. And <laughs> there are some options that you know it'll be associated with some risk and that you may regret in the future. So just use your um, intuitive to make correct choices. And lastly, um, I just want to mention uh, at Cal State LA, uh, we are currently holding some information sessions for food science and technology program. If you're interested in knowing more about this major or career path, you're yeah, welcome to join us. It's, um, um, yeah, so uh, is that okay to announce? Yeah, it? you could you can add it in the chat if you want. Um, okay, I'll everyone. add the link. I'll yeah. add the link in the chat. I mean, if anyone's not sure about what career you want to choose, um, it doesn't hurt to, to look into one more option and you doesn't have to choose this major if you attend the session, but it definitely opens up more for you and something for you to consider. Yes, thank you. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I just wanted to say a major thank you to all of our panelists. We really appreciate you. If anyone has any last minute questions you can ask, we have the survey that we would love for you to fill out that was in the chat. I could set, uh, put it in again if we need to. We got a few emails and some really good information. So these are great resources for all of you. So if you're interested in keeping in touch with anyone and asking questions, please do. We encourage you to keep involved with the career communities because this is how you build that family to get to all those STEM classes. I'll stick around for a minute in case anyone has any extra questions. But again, thank you so much panelists. That was fantastic. And we're getting uh, Jing's email in there too. So we'll have lots of resources and we really appreciate you sharing your experiences <laughs> all right thank you folks thank you thank have you. a good one <laughs> i'll stick around in case anyone needs anything or has any questions <laughs> all right you got that email there oh i don't think it showed up with your email i think it just said here's my email Oh, oh, it's oh, above. Is it in there? It's ah, ha, ha, there it is. Oh, Good yeah. job. <laughs> it's in the mix. Well, fantastic. I mean, these are all amazing careers, and I'm super impressed <laughs> by every single one of your paths. So, all right. I think Leslie just came in, but we're not sure. Oh. <laughs> and Jing, I'm like, who doesn't love food? I know. <laughs> yeah. And I, to think about the idea of like the packaging and the process that goes into it and how it is going to affect our world with the pandemic like it's mm -hmm. yeah we, i mean even people for people there. who do not um work in this field it's always good to know about how food is processed prepared stored uh how to preserve food even at home right yeah i have to say um that I, I totally did an entire unit on nutritional health education and I got a C because I don't like people telling me what to eat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's interesting because the final thing that turned me into, um, uh, into being pescatarian was my five-year-old daughter. And it was over chicken because I forgot that chicken was chicken. And, and you just never know what motivates you to pay more attention to your food. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for us, we're not um, nutritionists. So we're not trying to focus on the uh, the nutrition aspects. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more like how food are prepared, processed, transported, uh, trans transported, and stored. The uh, food processing is really interesting. I think food processing and food. Uh, new product development are the two areas the students are also most interested in. But food safety is so critical. It's also very important. And I personally love food chemistry. That's just my area. I like to know oh, how things are going on inside the food and what causes the changes, like uh, color changes, texture changes, and there, everything has a reason behind it. That's so cool to find out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so when you start making your way up to Napa for those um, those vineyard tours, then Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then uh, when your was it your husband that's uh, doing the biochem in the yes. brewery? Yeah, we'll help you out as well. You know, if you need a few extra tasters, tasters, <laughs> <Taste> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, fine yeah. with it. <laughs>
it's like we've left the valley but then now all these little like microbreweries and the food scene is happening and i'm like i wouldn't even know where to go when i get home right <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much again. And we have, uh, I think our main speaker is at five, if you guys are interested in seeing right. um, him talk. I think it's, uh, who do you, Josh, do you remember the name? I think it's- It was, I'm trying to pop it up right here. here. <laughs> yeah. I cannot find it. If you go to- you have more yeah. sessions continuing uh, following yeah. this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's, mm -hmm. it's over a three day process, which is kind of nice. So it's it's and we're trying to split it up where there's like a social identity kind of portion of it each day at different times. So students can go and financial aid and internships and just lots of different aspects. And today is more so STEM focused. So uh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you for having me yeah. here. Well, uh, have a good everyone. rest of the day. Okay, Bye. well, take care, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. I'll take care.